Let's get ready to simulate data! Wow, this is gonna be an exciting one, guys. So, um, here is something that I've been working on for a couple weeks or so. And it is this module that I created that allows you to simulate data. What amazingness is that? So I see this as beneficial for instructors who want to provide data sets for their students. I see it as beneficial to students who want to practice doing different sorts of analyses. I see it as beneficial for me so I don't have to keep simulating data for people. It's actually amazing. And so what this little uh, module or this app or whatever you want to call it, what it does is it allows you to create your own unique data sets up to three variables. In the future, I plan on doing more. So maybe you'll be able to do 10 variables or 100 variables or 1,000 variables. We'll see. So I'm going to walk you through a situation where let's say you do an experiment. So we might do a t-test or an ANOVA or maybe you're just collecting data on some sort of relationship, so you might do a regression or correlation. So to start, let's go ahead and make up a situation. Let's say we are investigating stress as our outcome variable, and as the independent variable, we've got treatment. So maybe we've got, uh, or actually we'll call it meditation. All right, so we've got a data set, and on the right it shows a data preview. And so notice that it has now changed the names to stress and meditation. And this only gives you the first uh, six rows, but um, you, when you download the data, obviously it'll give you more than six rows. So we can specify that we either want, we want a sample size from 10 to 1,000. And hey, we like big data sets. Let's go ahead and go, or 905, why not? I think you can double click on that. I don't know, I guess you can only drag it. Anyway, um, so because this is kind of simulating an ANOVA sort of situation, uh, well, this, yeah, this needs some explaining. So effect size type uh, is going to be means or association. So if I change to association, notice I've got two numeric variables here, which is all well and good if you want an association variable. But for this one, we are doing means. I'll simulate a association one later. And so now you can specify how many groups. So let's say we have a control group, a meditation group, and a fake meditation group. So we're gonna actually have three variables. And so now we wanna specify what the standard deviation is of the outcome variable. So this is stress. So standard deviation of the outcome, what can you do? Or what do you specify? I'm going to say, I don't know, two, or maybe I'll go 2.5, who knows? We'll see how it goes, and then we could always look at the data here and see if it actually makes sense. All right, so label for groups, this is where you specify we've got a control, and then meditation, and then fake meditation. All right, and notice that this is updating as you go. So now you can specify the means of the groups. Now in the background, it's not actually gonna give you, the means aren't gonna come out exactly what you specify. Um, it's going to be, so let's say the mean of the group is five. It's not gonna come out as exactly five. It's gonna come, basically this tells the computer to sample from a normal distribution with a mean of five. So for group one, let's say that I wanna do a mean of, um, Let's go four. Mean of group two, so that is our meditation group. Let's say that we have a modest effect, uh, a modest effect size, and then maybe the mean for group two. Let's go ahead and say that that ends up being five. And so we also have some additional options. We can include demographics, which just gives us ethnicity, gender, and I thought there was age in there, but maybe there isn't. Anyway. It gives you some uh, basic demographics. These actually are designed to not be correlated with these just because it's kind of a tedious nightmare to uh, do multivariate sort of simulations. But at least it can give you something to report as practice. And you could also include a covariate. And so um, let's say we have a covariate that we want to control for SES, socioeconomic status. And then you specify how correlated it is with the dependent variable, which again is stress. 
So let's say uh, point three that, well, let's see. Higher socioeconomic status means more stress? Probably not. So I would think that's a negative 0.3. And then let's say the standard deviation of covariate is three and the mean is 12, I guess. And then right here, you can specify your data set name. We'll call this stress experiment. And then you would click on the download button and then you can choose to download it wherever. I'm just gonna download it in my downloads folder. And then once I open it up, look at that! We've got a data set with stress, meditation, SES, ethnicity, gender. Man, that is cool, just gotta say. And then, like I said, I think I said 905 and it ends at row 906. So between that and the column names, it's exactly what we got. So that's actually really cool. And now you can use that and import it into R or into JASP or into Jamovi or God forbid, SPSS. So that would be a situation where we're doing kind of an experimental sort of thing. But let's say instead of doing an experiment, we're looking at some sort of relationship. Like maybe we want to see the relationship between stress and hours, where hours represents how many hours a student works. Okay. So we're gonna just change the title there and maybe this data set, we're gonna ask for 600 observations instead. And then effect size type, we're gonna change that from means to association. And let's think about this. How strong do we want the correlation to be? Of course, you could set it really high just cause it's kind of fun to see really strong relationships. But let's be realistic and say, well, actually point two is kind of a good correlation that the more hours you work, the more stress you have, but it's kind of a weak relationship. So we'll go ahead and say it's 0.2. So variable one mean, that's the dependent variable. So let's say our stress variable has a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of two. And of course you could always look at the data here and see if the scores are in the range that you think they should be. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to figure out um, what range of standard deviation or what range you should expect from a particular standard deviation. And maybe I'll make another video about how I do that. Uh, but that's uh, beyond the scope of this video. So let's say hours worked a week. Let's say the average is 10 and maybe there's a standard deviation of three. So now if we do that, we go up here that student's working 10 hours, that student's working about nine, 13, eight. Okay, maybe we want a little more variability. So maybe we'll say four instead. Okay, so we got 11, we got somebody who's going down to three. So maybe that has a little more variability. It's kind of hard to see the variability just from the first six observations, but you get the idea. And maybe this time we don't want demographics and uh, covariate. Sure, why not? So instead of SES, maybe we wanna covary out, let's see, what else might cause you to be stressed besides work? Maybe you've got um, anxiety. So we got a Likert scale of anxiety and anxiety is gonna be positively correlated with stress. So let's say that that ends up being 0.4, so we're gonna do a pretty strong correlation. And the standard deviation of anxiety, let's give that a fun one, let's, a fun one. Wow, 20 is a fun number, look at us, we're having fun. All right, so our standard deviation is 20, our mean, let's go ahead and say 80. So we got an arbitrary scale and look at that, we got values that go, at least for the first few, we got values that go down to 67 and up to 138. And maybe this we'll call um, stress, and oh, what is that? Hours. And then click on download, and then you download it, and you're done. So look at that, very easy way to simulate data for practice for yourself or practice for your students or any sort of thing like that. So with this app, you have the possibility of doing endless hours of statistical analysis. Isn't that fun and exciting? <laughs> Anyway, leave a comment if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions about how this might be improved, and I will see you next time.